Hey guys, Gids here for a new video on this upcoming gacha MMORPG game called Grand Saga. So yes, it's an MMO and yes, it's also a gacha game. This one's also cross-platform, playable in PC and in mobile. So mobile gamers rise, yay, good for you guys. Okay, I'm making this video so that you can manage your expectations about the game and what the game is going to look like. I'm not going to deep dive onto the systems mechanics because that will take too long and also I've been playing in a Japanese server for like five days and I don't know Japanese. So I will not be able to explain the systems in depth anyway, okay? If you want more content on Grand Saga, leave a like on this video, subscribe onto the channel. I plan to make content on this game as soon as it releases. So they just announced that pre-registration will be available on October 16. So that's like a week from now, almost. So yeah, comment down below if you are actually going to play the game. So let's start off with the most important part, I think, is the characters in the game. Okay, so if you ever hear gacha, first thing that comes to mind usually is that the playable characters are kind of limited. So you usually want to save for summons for the characters, right? So similar to Genshin Impact, that's what comes to mind, right? Well, for this game, actually, all the characters are already playable. So you just get to select which characters you want to play, right? And they're all available. If you want to switch out, you can switch them out anytime you want actually and whenever new characters are added into the pool you only have to finish a story quest for them and you get to unlock the character which is really good because yeah this game will have a lot of characters especially there's also elements right elemental attacks and of course elemental weaknesses for each character so there's going to be a huge pool of playable characters later on in the future so yeah the game also kind of follows the holy trinity of having a tank support and a DPS in a party. But in most cases, well, probably it's just my experience, is it going to be one tank and then two DPS? Or maybe a semi-DPS with a little bit of utility? And then, yeah, that's basically it. And then, of course, you're going to want to build a DPS character for each of the elements because there's going to be dungeons where you actually have to take advantage of the elemental abilities of each character. Okay, but anyways, even if you have a tank, if you actually focus on them, they're actually still going to deal a lot of damage. So don't worry about the classes as much. It's not like any other MMORPG game wherein roles really matter. Let's move on to the gacha part and the progression system for the game. So this is the part where it's heavily to win because it's gacha right this is the gacha part right anytime you hear gacha again it's going to be pay to win there's no way you get a gacha game and it's not pay to win yeah there's four categories or types of equipments that you can put onto a character and the first two are gacha and the other two are basically farmable to dungeons okay first two are the grand weapons and the artifacts and the others are just equipment like armor and accessories Okay, so let's first talk about the first two, the gacha elements, which are the grand weapons and artifacts. Grand weapons are the ones on the left side of the character equipment screen. So these four grand weapons right here are linked to the four ability slots that a character can have. So there's a max of four abilities per character and there's four grand weapons basically, right? So each of these grand weapons again have their own skill the general skill and then there's also an ultimate skill called i think the translation was grand skill so they have their ultimate abilities wherein you swipe the swipe the icon and they use their ultimate ability and there's this amazing um animation that plays out okay so these things are unique for each of the grand weapons some of them deal damage some of them are utilities and some of them actually lets your character transform into the grand weapon Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. Okay, so each of the grand weapons also have their innate stats or passive stats or yeah, stats in general, which is basically attack. Okay, so each of the grand weapons that you equip will give you attack stat. And every time you level them, so you can level them maximum of level 90, will give you attack power. And the gacha part is that you need duplicates for these ones to get them to like 5 dupes right so each copy is basically going to increase the attack stat and i think their ability damage as well okay so that's the part where it's gacha and again you kind of want four ssrs on this one and for th those four ssr characters or four ssr grand weapons 
you need five more copies. So that's like six times four. So 24 grand weapons in total. So seems like a lot, no? So yeah. So that's for the grand weapons. Now let's talk about artifacts. Okay, artifacts, the stats that artifacts give. So each of the artifacts will give you HP and defense, basically. And each, each of them also have their own passive skills. Okay, so grand weapons are your active skills and your artifacts are the passive skills. So this is where the character building comes in because this is where you can find increased attack damage, increased defense, increased um, HP, increased crit rate, crit damage, or whatever. Okay, so those are the possible passive skills and there are also some passive skills that are specific to bosses there are passive skills that are specific to pvp okay so basically that's where you get your character building and same concept with regards to grand weapons again you can level them up up to 90 each level basically increases the hp and defense that the artifact gives you and again each copy will increase the passive strength or passive stats and of course the main stats as well okay so yeah again that's four artifacts that you want to get to five dupes so that's six times four again 24 ssr artifacts so this is gonna be hard to max out no <laughs> everything's going to be a little bit hard to max out but yeah we'll talk about the gacha part more later but yeah anyways there's going to be a lot there's actually so many artifacts in the game so there are also ones that are specific for the character so usually each character have their own artifact that's tailored to them only there are some for ability damage as well or elemental damage as well so yeah that's basically it for grand weapons in your artifacts so now that you know these two gacha parts of the game let's talk about the gacha itself Okay, so how hard is it going to be to max out a certain grand weapon or artifact? Okay, so just by looking at norm numbers, kind of seems hard, right? Seems hard. It seems really hard, but it's not impossible, especially for free-to-play players. But I'm not sure because I'm playing on JP and I'm playing catch-up because this game released two years ago on Japan, right? So I'm playing catch-up, so I'm. it's definitely going to be a lot of... Uh, catch up resources that they've given me and a lot of summon resources so i'm not sure how much we can actually get on global launch so it might be harder to actually summon but yeah so far i've been getting pretty lucky with my pulls but anyways if you look at the gacha screen there are so many banners right here there are banners that are specific to grand weapons only and there are banners that are also just specific to artifacts and there's this banner right here that's specific that's actually pretty good because you get to select which characters grand weapons you want to get okay so there's like each each character have like four to five options for their ssr grand weapons and if you look at this one you get to select which character you want to feature or to have a rate up banner on okay so this one is very very helpful for getting the actual grand weapons that you want for a character that you're building so usually you want to pick your main dps for this one either for pvp or pve usually just you just focus on one aspect usually it's just pvp no so you just focus on one character on this one and once you get all their ssr stuff ssr grand weapons you get to focus on artifacts next okay so this is one way to make it easier right so let's talk about the pity and summon system so every 10 pulls you get one sr okay guaranteed one sr and every 100 pulls is your guaranteed ssr okay so interestingly if you summon an ssr while you are not yet at pity basically pity is the 10 the 100 summons right so if you are not yet at pity but you accidentally pull an sr or an ssr the pity bar does not reset actually but it does not increase as well okay so whenever you pick up an ssr the pity bar, pity will not increase okay so for example you have 50 percent pity and you did a 10 pull and you pulled an ssr the pity will stay at 50 percent okay so i'm not sure if this applies to all banners though but yeah that's from my experience so far lastly for the equipments and for the accessories Right. Equipments, basically you have your armor, you level them up for the stats, 
there are some tiers that give you attack, HP, defense, and everything else, right? And accessories as well are pretty good. So I'm not going to touch much on this thing because these things are farmable through dungeons and you can also craft them via the blacksmith. The armors can be leveled up and each 10 levels that you give it are basically unlocking substats for them. So every 10 levels up to level 50, uh, you have up to 5 substats available for an SSR armor. Okay, so this can also be a part of the RNG part of actually getting the correct equipments for the characters. Okay, now let's talk about combat. So I know this one will make some people drop the game instantly because there is auto combat. So yeah, there's full auto. There's semi-auto where the, your character just does basic attacks and you get to do the skills on your own. You can also manually do it all. But honestly, I see no reason why you wouldn't do auto. Okay, <laughs> The only reason why you will be manually taking over is basically when you're trying to dodge um, AoE boss attacks, right? But aside from that, there's no reason not to auto. Okay. But anyways, yeah, there are people who like auto. There are people who don't like auto. I personally like auto because I get to play the game while I'm doing something else. So multitasking, yay. Or you can also just be watching your favorite anime or show on Netflix or something while also playing the game. So it can be very chill if you're just a casual player, right? And I think almost all the content will be doable through auto but if you want to try hard a certain stage you can always just manual a problem that i'm seeing when it comes to combat in this game is that there is no targeting system so i'm not sure and maybe i just haven't discovered it or haven't found it but I, I did not see a targeting system for the game so yeah that might be bad <laughs> that might be bad i don't like it and i'm not sure if there is a way to do targeting system but yeah that's one of the problems that i've been struggling with but maybe there is a setting somewhere there are so many dungeons in the game that will get you your resources for progression there are also world bosses where you can party up with other people and try to beat them some dungeons in the game are tagged as solo team and party okay solo basically will only let you bring in one character into the dungeon Team is going to let you bring in three characters into the dungeon, but these are three of your characters, okay? And then party will let you party up with other players where each of you will be bringing in one character each, okay? So yeah, that's basically for the dungeons and the world bosses and stuff, okay? Of course, world bosses are timed. There are certain times that they appear and you can hunt them, okay? As for PvP, so far what I've seen, there's an arena system and there's a guild battle as well, but don't get your hopes up for this one because it's all auto. All auto. Both for arena and guild battle, basically the combat is the same. Basically you have this 3x3 uh, grid where you can position your characters for the front line, the middle position, or maybe on the back line. Okay, So you get to position them against the enemy's three characters and you will be fighting it out all on auto the interesting thing about this one is that there's a bar on the lower left which makes it kind of a turn-based game where in each of the characters based on their agility i think they will be moving and whoever reaches the finish line first will be casting their skills first okay so it's not just a sp spam everything game right spam everything battle spam all skills battle because each character will only be able to use one ability at a time as soon as they reach their full bar okay on the bottom left and if you get stunned well you will not be able to move the bar okay so that makes it interesting so a lot of the cc abilities are actually pretty good and pretty strong okay so that's pretty much it for the overview so far on the game based on my five days of experience in the Japanese server. I'm not sure how the global launch will work, so characters might be different, there might be new dungeons, or the gacha system might be different, but yeah, this is what we have in the Japanese server. So yeah, not a lot of expectations, but this is just an overview for the mechanics and gameplay, of course. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to answer them if I know. If I don't know, then yeah, we might just have to wait for global launch, okay? I try to 
respond to each comment that I get. So yeah, just leave your comments down in the comment section. Anyways, if you want to deep dive on some certain systems, let me know. And again, for more content on this game, Grand Saga, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys again next time. Bye-bye. You know I'm addicted to you. And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo. Got me coming back for more, even when I've been screwed. Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight.